Everton lost their opening two fixtures of the 1984-85 season to dampen some of the enthusiasm generated from the storming finish to the previous campaign. But a 1-0 win at Chelsea on the first day of September stopped the mini-rot and signalled the start of the greatest period in the club's history. We were confident. Um, because I was a little older, I was always a, a little bit wary because I knew you could get smacked in the face in this game. Um, but all the young lads were just so confident in the, the team's ability. Plus the fact we had Neville Southall. Yeah. And we knew we weren't going to concede many goals. I mean, it wasn't just Neville. It was, it was Kevin Ratcliffe and Derek Mountainfield and the lads at the back were equally as important in keeping clean sheets. But we knew that if we could get one goal, then invariably we were never going to lose a match because no one scored two against us very often and we were more often than not going to win it. Some of the football played as Everton swept to the top of the table was quite superb. And this goal is one of the most iconic in the club's history. For Sharp, and he got behind Lawrence and there did Sharp! What a fantastic goal! Bracewell, Alec Fashidi. Can he finish it off here? Magnificently done. Everton were irresistible and brushed the opposition aside in style. Reads cross Gray! What a fantastic goal! Goes back again to Stephen. Gray's there again! Oh, I say! Stephen away from Pickering. Yes! Another superb goal! An invincibility in the league was matched in the FA Cup and the European Cup Winners' Cup. Luton Town almost upset the apple cart in the Cup semi-final at Villa Park, but Everton were not to be denied. And a second successive final appearance at Wembley was booked courtesy of goals from Kevin Sheedy and Derek Mountfield. He drove one. It's there. Sheedy. Sheedy curls it. Mountfield's there. In Europe, University College Dublin gave the Toffees an almighty first-round scare. But Inter Bratislava and Fortuna Sittard offered no such resistance. And only the German giants of Bayern Munich lay between Everton and a first-ever major European final. A splendid goalless draw was etched out in the Olympic Stadium in Munich to set up a winner-takes-all second leg a fortnight later. It was arguably Goodison Park's greatest ever night. Fergal. Is onside and clean in at Neville Southall. And Hernis off the goalkeeper. There are two on the line for Everton, but Hernis finds a way past them. And Gray goes in. Sharp! The perfect start to the second half. Captured the party move. Stevens with another testing long throw. Fast lost it. A goal. Andy Gray. And Fast will look back at this and wonder. It was his own players who balked him, and Andy Gray had an open goal. Onside, played onside by Nagby and Trevor Stephen. It's settled now. And Rotterdam, here they come. Tremendous piece of vision from Andy Gray, and a finish to admire from Trevor Stephen. Everton simply came out for the second half rolled up their sleeves and refused to be beaten they're through to their first European final Andy Gray's 
crucial goal, the second of Everton's three. And the unique treble is very much on at the expense of the similar ambitions of Bayern Munich. We always felt if we got one, we would get another up that end. And the boss was, he said there was nothing wrong first half. He was quite happy the way we were playing. We just didn't get a break. We got a break very early second half. And by God, we showed them we could play a bit. I think the night just summed about everything that was good about Everton Football Club. The, the passion, the commitment, not only the players, but the supporters. And uh, that's something that will live with me forever. A unique treble was now in Everton's sights. The championship was duly wrapped up with five games still remaining and there was an air of inevitability about the Cup Winners' Cup final against Rapid Vienna. Oh, the back pass might come to Sharp. He's got Andy Gray in there. That's the goal! And if the photographer will just move just a moment for Kevin Sheedy, there's the cross coming in, and it went all the way. And it's in there! And it's Trevor Stephen! And it's the second for Everton! Oh, here's a chance for Krenkel. Krenkel! It's amazing what certain decisions can do in football. That looked offside from where I was sitting. Everton scored a goal that didn't look offside. Now here's Sheedy. Well, there's the answer! For just a moment, that faithful left foot of Kevin Sheedy has put way for those. And the evident fans, 20,000 of them and more, in the stadium in Rotterdam. A joyous night for them, and certainly their team has done British football proud as Kevin Ratcliffe raises the European Cup with his cup. They just had that minus there, five minutes or so from the end when Frankel scored his goal lead was written to 2-1, but Sheedy's immediate response put Everton back into great heart and made sure of a night that they never really ever looked like losing. Sadly, the FA Cup final at Wembley just three days later proved one match too many, and a Norman Whiteside goal in extra time gave the trophy to Manchester United. But it had been a season of dreams for Everton. Kendall was the manager of the year, Peter Reid, the PFA Player of the Year. Neville Southall, the Writers Footballer of the Year. I don't think you realise how big of the award is to actually get in and see the people who are here. It's a great honour for the club as well. Excellent keeper, and I wouldn't like anyone else in my goal. Um, I think he's the number one. It was just about the finest ever team Everton had assembled. I feel very proud to, the, to say that I played in the club's most successful period in history. It's a fantastic football club great history and tradition and to have been involved in probably the most exciting times of a club like this history is very special for the players. I think we've gone 37 games now and that's the culmination of it. And it's very difficult to, to find words to put such emotion really. When you were playing non-league, not too long ago really, and playing for Berry, did you ever dream this moment would come? No, I thought we might get to the Emerald Scottish Cup final with Berry, but that's as close as I come. <laughs> Gary Stevens at right back was a supreme athlete and an England regular. Pat Vanden Howe was a ferocious tackler and an intimidating opponent. Kevin Ratcliffe was the captain, a great leader, blessed with electrifying pace. Derek Mountfield was a centre half with a centre forward's eye for goal. Peter Reid, the midfield general who defied career threatening injuries to reach the very top. Trevor Stephen was a big money buy from Burnley but more than proved his worth. Graham Sharp led the attack, on his day, the best centre forward around. Andy Gray was given a new lease of life and took it with both hands. Paul Bracewell was Reid's lieutenant, a player of immense ability. 
Kevin Sheedy had the sweetest left foot you could wish for, mixing accuracy with raw power. Adrian Heath had started the season in scorching goal-scoring form, but his year was curtailed through injury. Mark Higgins played no part, but he would have done had his career not been shattered by a serious knee injury. And the last line of defence was quite simply the best in the world.